Hello, welcome back. Um, today we've got the uh, the Blue Pullman train set to look at. Uh, there's the box. There's nothing in it at the moment apart from the apart from the track. Um, so this is the trying one, as you can see there. I think it's um, RS52. There you go. And there's another little label there. I don't know what that means. It might be that it's from a uh, one of the catalogue houses. Um, I don't know. But um, here's the uh, 1964 catalogue, which I think is the first year that it appeared as a train set. Um, and they're heavily pushing some of the Minic motorway and... Uh, uh, model land uh, models in here um, so uh, and you'll see on the layout I've actually got not this particular church with the chimes but the same one um, uh, which they re-released in the 80s and 90s uh, uh, these are kits and uh, pre-coloured so they, they were just uh, you know, you just had to stick them together. Um, so I've got hold of one of those. And um, here's the train set in the catalogue. And it says new. It did actually appear in the 63 catalogue. I'm not sure it appeared as a train set. Um, but the separate items did appear, I think. But it didn't come out uh, uh, until just before... The 1964 catalogue, I think, sometime in between the two catalogues. So you get the uh, the power car and the uh, centre car and uh, the dummy power car at the other end there, um, and that's it. And you just get some uh, an oval of track, and uh, that's what you get in the train set. Um, so. It's uh, not not so big on the illustrations in this catalogue for the trains. You see, you've got the sets here, and they're in quite small format, um, and they're they're pushing the Minic motorway in this catalogue quite heavily. Uh, so you've got all the usual models. And you've got all three of the little 040 tanks there. That's nice, isn't it? Polly, Nelly, and Connie. Um, and uh, oh, also on the layout today, I've got a later version of the uh, B12. Uh, came out in 70, 78, I think, with the wartime livery. That's on the layout today as well. We'll be running that. And that's got the chuff chuff sound. And uh, you can see they uh, they were selling the uh, the parlour cars separately. But not the kitchen cars. Um, but there was a kit master kit available apparently. At around the same time. Uh, so we've got all the usual pages of uh, items in here you've got the uh, showed you that one um, last last time was it or the time before um, yeah so they did the uh, Princess Elizabeth the EM2 and some coaches as uh, kits uh, so in the back we've got quite a few pages of Minic motorways and you could get them in sets with controllers and everything and uh, you could buy the vehicles as separate items and uh, loads of track sections uh, some of which had uh, railway tracks embedded in them so you could mix the two up all the road signs here so it's a pretty comprehensive uh, system um, 
and uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to it all. Came to a sticky end. Um, there's some track with some sort of rails running through it. Um, so you could have a road rail kind of facility going on. Um, so yeah, it's got a nice cover with uh, with a Minic Jaguar and uh, the blue Pullman there. Looking pretty good. That's a nice, nice illustration on the box as well. So let's go and see it on the railway. Here she is. Um, it's in pretty good condition. This is the dummy end and the uh, coat of arms is intact on the nose on that end. Unfortunately, it's not, not all there on the, uh, on the power car with the motor bogey. It's just, most of it's just gone. Uh, but it is quite old, isn't it? 1964-ish. So let's get her going. It's a good runner. I think this was probably the first trying model with flush glazing. They later changed it Um, especially when the uh, coloured stripe went all the way along the model in the, um, the grey version, I think. Um, so that was obviously a lot cheaper for them. I think this is the best one, really. Put a little bit of extra weight in the dummy car at the end here because that was uh, quite light and it was wobbling about a bit. So I put a little bit of weight in there to calm it down a bit. Um, yeah, and it's got the uh, the lovely uh, motor bogey in it that they put in all their transcontinental diesels. It's a great looking train, isn't it? Probably the prettiest train on uh, on British railways, barring steam engines, of course. Here she comes. Over here, we've got uh, the church. This is probably from the 80s or 90s. It's got, uh, it's got the stained glass windows, which look quite nice. Um, it's been put together with quite a lot of glue, as you can see there. Uh, and this later version, you can tell because the clock face is white. The earlier one from the 60s has got a black um, clock face so it's all intact and uh, quite a nice model of a church really missing the flag I can probably sort one out for that put that in the corner um, yeah great looking item uh, the other item I got hold of at the same time I'll show you that uh, it's over here just sitting by the controller, it's um, this tin plate signal box and uh, I don't know who made it at all. I did look it up on Google and it might be uh, by a company called Tin Toy or something like that. Um, but yeah, not not sure the origin of that. But it's I thought it was one of those items you get with biscuits in it or sweets or something. And it it might be you know might be one of those things you got in Woolworths. Um, and then when you finish the sweets, you can 
put it on your railway. So I thought that was quite nice. Only cost a couple of quid, but uh, I thought that was quite nice. So we've got quite a quite an array of signal boxes on the layout. And uh, let's get the B12 going. And he's um, he's on the modern track today. Uh, and despite the fact that this is from the 70s, the flanges on the wheels are quite crude and sometimes they tend to jump a little bit on the pico points, but it uh, does behave itself most of the time. And of course you don't get the benefits of the magnadesium on this track, but then again I'm not going to be pulling big chains on a 6x4 layout, so that yeah, doesn't really matter. And I think uh, the mechanical noise from the tender, uh, some people find it annoying, but then again, some of the digital ones with their speakers and everything, they, they sound quite annoying as well. I've seen some of those on YouTube that are you know, slightly great on the ears. Excellent model, lasted years in the range up until the early 2000s. So they got their money for out of that moulding, didn't they? The Blue Pullman was a, a luxury train, um, really. So the fares on it were not cheap by any means, and it was just like a like a business class thing between London and Birmingham, London and Bristol, uh, Manchester as well, I think. Go. We'll have a closer look at that actually, shall we? We'll uh, bring him round to the front and we'll park up the uh, B12 for a minute. Like that. And um, there you go, you can see the nice glazing on this. You've got the uh, Coat of arms in between those windows there as well. Frosted windows at the end, presumably for the for the toilets. You've got the lamps on the tables and cups. And uh, yeah, you've got some underframe detail. I'm not sure about the bogies. Uh, they appear to be the normal trying bogies that they put underneath most things. Um, the LMS type, I think they are, aren't they? Or the early BR type. Um, yeah, these are these are good models for 1964, I think. Let's have a look at the. Um, oops, excuse me. Let's have a look at the the end of this. You've got quite a nice coat of arms on the end and that's all intact at this end so that's that's nice yeah great things no cab no cab detail but uh, you wouldn't have expected it at this point in time and, uh, yeah, it's in pretty good condition the front there so the uh, let's just get a little I'll just point, point this out you've got the these are actually white covers that they put on the front in the daytime I think and the lights were behind them and the in the middle there this round thing is actually the tail light 
below that, I don't know if you can see it, there is a grill, which is presumably where the horn lives. Uh, yeah, so it's a good model. The uh, you've got the radiator fan. But, uh, these I don't know what these things are. Ribs above the engine compartment, and that's the uh, that's the exhaust there for the engine. So. And then between the engine and the passenger cabin there, you've got the guards area there for luggage and parcels and whatever. So they wouldn't have been directly next to the engine there. So these were double glazed and uh, soundproofed. So probably probably a nice comfortable ride. So there you go. That's the the trying blue Pullman. So hope you enjoyed that. And uh, hope to see you all again soon. And bye for now.